Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's Thursday, November 15th, and I'm back. I'm sorry I missed y'all last week. The uh, office had uh, their video people out at Foxwoods and couldn't do the show last week, so I wasn't available. But I'm back. We had a good show coming up for you. We're going to talk about what happened at Foxwoods, some interesting stories at Foxwoods, some interesting stories about Jimmy Frick I've been reading about. We're also going to talk about my hands of the week and my run going down to the Cherokee Casino starting tomorrow for Scotty Wins Poker Tournament. Also, our phone calls. Coming up next on The Mouthpiece. Welcome to The Mouthpiece. And our first thing off the top of the deck, we're going to talk about Foxwoods Resort and Casinos Tournament. That was run and ended two days ago. I want to congratulate Mike Vela for winning the tournament. I don't know who he is. I've never met him. I heard he played real well and deserved to win. But the most important persons I want to congratulate are my two very dear friends, Nick Shulman and Ninad Medic, for finishing second and third, respectively, the defending champion and the one who won the year before as they tried to become World Series of Poker history by winning the same tournament twice within a three-year period. No other person has won the same tournament twice in any WPD tournaments. Congratulations for them for almost pulling off something that would have been spectacular. I also want to talk about a lot of bull crap that's been going on on the internet involving uh, the company that I represent, uh, FullTiltPoker.com with the Jimmy Frick incident. Um, Mom, I'm going to go out on the limb and I'm going to back Howard Letterer in this situation. Everybody is out back knocking him and saying these bad things about Howard for what he said about Jimmy. I have met Jimmy. Jimmy is a wonderful guy, a nice guy. I don't believe he is a freak or a weird guy, but he is a little bit quiet. He is a little bit young. And the thing is that people won't understand is... When Howard sent that email out that was never supposed to be out to anybody, he was looking about what was best for the company. And as far as marketability and marketing for Full Tilt, he believed that Jimmy wasn't a right situation for Full Tilt Poker. So for everybody out there that wants to knock Howard, you have to understand that point of the view. Number one, that email was never supposed to be sent. And number two... He was looking out for the best interest in Full Tilt Poker. I love Jimmy. I think he's a great guy. I've met him. We've talked. We've hung out. But I would also, at the point and the situation, have sided with the decision at the time that Full Tilt Poker was not ready to put Jimmy Frick on the payroll. So, I'm leaving tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to Tulsa, Oklahoma again. Where Tulsa, Oklahoma is, even I don't know, but it's somewhere in the middle of nowhere for the Scotty Win Poker Tournament. Scotty has two tournaments a year now, and because of all the good things Scotty has done for me in the past, and because we are good friends, I have gone out of my way to support this tournament at Cherokee Casino. It is a very, really well-run casino, run establishment. They treat us like really good down there. They take care of us. They treat us the way poker players are supposed to be treated. And I enjoy going there. So I will be leaving tomorrow. I'll be there till the 22nd. It'll be my first tournament in almost three weeks as I've had a great vacation away. And God knows I needed it because it was really getting to me. That's why I missed the Foxwoods tournament. The big a tournament as Foxwoods was, I was just on the road too long. And I was just starting to just really, really, really starting to get to me. So, um, here I am. And uh, there I go. And... Wish me all luck. I will try to do very well. My hand of the week comes to you by MikeTheMouth.com FullTiltPoker.com Pro Player Drink Pro Player and Skin Industries Skin Industries, buy some t-shirts, buy some Pro Player, play at Full Tilt, Mike the Mouth Mattiso, that's what I represent. My hand of the week comes to you by live action poker game. I haven't played much tournament or much uh, online this week, and there's not, not really many hands I can remember playing live. But this is one where I made a lay down that was wrong, and you tell me what I should have done. It was raised on the button 
I re-raised it out of the big blind. I had two tens. The flop come ace, nine, deuce, rainbow. I bet the flop uh, Tommy Fisher called. The turn court comes a nine. I checked. He bet. The board is ace, nine, nine, deuce. Well, what can I beat? I took two tens face up. I flipped them in the muck. He shows me the king eight, no pair, no draw. That's my hand of the week. Coming to you by the mouthpiece. I don't know what I could have done different. Should I have fired the turn? Should I not have fired a turn? We were playing Lemon Hold'em 4 and 800. But what could he have had? What could he truly have had? The flop came Ace, Deuce, Nine, Rainbow. Did he outplay me? Well, yes, he outplayed me. Could I have avoided being outplayed? That's my question. That's my hand of the week. Coming back to Foxwoods, we're going to talk about a special hand of the week. Also, that came up. Uh, it involved J.C. Tran, another gentleman. And I know you all heard about it. It was during the tournament at Foxwoods in which a gentleman raised the field 2,000 and J.C. Tran called with Jack-9 suited. J uh, Chow Jiang folded two tens and the flop came 9-9 nine, nine, uh, rag. The gentleman saw his cards, saw J.C.'s cards and threw his hand in the muck in which the dealer grabbed them out of the muck, flipped them face up. The running, running straight came and the gentleman yes was rewarded the pot. Now I have seen this video now three times and I would like to give my professional opinion on it. A, the guy did take his can face down and throw it in the muck. At that rate it should have been declared a dead hand. But, and I do say but, because of the new rule that makes everybody who's all in hands face Turn, turn face up. That dealer should have tapped the hand on the muck and flipped it up. And his hand should have been considered dead with the hand turned face up. And that's what should have been the correct ruling. This way it avoids collusion and it shows what the gentleman did have. There is no way, when I looked at that video, that the gentleman who looked back at his cards three times and threw them face down in the muck should have been able to retrieve those cards and be a live hand. But the dealer's correct decision should have been tap the deck, turn them up, and then we would have had a ruling. What Foxwood's ruling was is they never touched the muck. The dealer did his job by retrieving them and turning it face up and it's a live hand is a bunch and a crock of shit. And I, well, that is my take on the hand. So we could throw that in also as my hand of the week. That's my fucking bullshit tournament hand of the week. And then you got my regular hand of the week. All right, everybody. This is my favorite part of the show. We're going to lead into the phone calls. Hopefully we'll have a few phone calls today. We might not because I did miss last week, and it just seems when I do miss a week, our phone calls are a little slow. So let's light up the screen. We could talk about anything. We could talk about my new glasses I just bought. You guys like them? All right, everybody. Light them up. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Mikey. Yo. Hey, this is Mike from Dallas, PA. How you doing? Hi, Mike. How you doing, buddy? Not bad, not bad. Hey, um, I don't know if you remember, but I met you just about a month ago down in Aruba. Uh, we were outside of the uh, tournament room on, uh, I believe it was the day before the finals. Okay. And uh, I, I had a pretty memorable T-shirt on. Uh, or ass. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember because I have very, very bad short-term memory loss. <laughs> But I'm sure if I saw you, I would. So how you doing? Yeah. I, I'm awesome. Hey, uh, I have a question for you. Sure. It, when you're playing with uh, players of pretty high caliber, how how much misinformation do you try to use to uh, try to you know? Get them to think that you, you might be bluffing, or you know. Well, do you I'm always uh, when I'm playing with cows. Whenever I'm, if I'm playing with uh, the average Joe, I don't even it doesn't even go through my mind. But when I'm playing with high caliber players, I'm I'm always trying to think I'm bluffing when I got a hand, and always trying to make them think I got a hand when I'm bluffing. So I'm always thinking that. I mean, are there any certain techniques that you'll use to? Uh, to try to uh, uh, throw off my mouth, out. I guess. I, I try and talk anybody into a call when I got the nuts or anybody into a fold when I got nothing. So, 
you know, I try and throw off different tells. You know, I'm read many books of tells and many different situations where I try and make look weak when I'm strong. So, you know, it just comes with experience. Right, right. All right, man. Well, right, man. thanks a lot. Good luck. Absolutely. It, call it, me was really, it was really great to meet you. Great. Take care. Any, call me anytime. All right, Mike. Take care. Later. Love the show. Yep. Yo, man, what you doing calling me during my lunch? What's going on? Mike? No, it's f***ing Joe. Yeah, it's Mike. Who's up? Liz Carter from San Diego. I got a quick question for you. Yeah. Uh, online tournament play, I know uh, you love it so much. Um, here's a situation I've been running into. I have an average stack, mm -hmm. late to a tournament, uh, mid to late stages of a tournament. I'm uh, in late position. I get, you, know, you get your ace king late position, you make the raise. Hands over, you take you take you down. The next hand, you 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 happen to get dealt jacks and raise again. Maybe you take it down. Maybe you play a hand. Now here's where I run into the problem. I know you never get dealt anything, but on the third hand, when you're on the button, and you get dealt eight, ten, the ace jack, whatever it may be, something in that vicinity. You raise again. Now you know somebody's going to play it back at you because now they think you're stealing. Right. What do you do in that situation? Well. <clears throat> You can fold. Me, if I raise on the button and they come over top of me, my money's all going in because everybody wants to outplay Mike Mattiso. So you can fold. But somebody like me, I if I raise on the cutoff or on the button and they move in on me or come over top of me, I ain't raising in the button or the cutoff with any position cards that I ain't ready to put my money in with. So it's a little bit different for me. So um, as a poker player, not being me, <clears throat> I'd be probably willing to throw Ace Jack away. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thanks for the call. I hope everything else goes well for you. I right, appreciate it, man. Call me anytime. All right, thanks. Bye. Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's Mike. Hello. 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 How you doing, Mike? This is Charlie from Bergen County. Charlie, what's up again, my friend? Good, good. I got a question for you. I've been playing a lot of one, two, no limit. I've been making a nice run. Okay. When do you move up in brackets? What's the, what's the best time? The payroll? Well, you know, it depends on how much money you have. When I'm running good, I just, you know, I try and move up and up and up. Uh, sometimes I start out with like 500 and I win like 500, and then I jump up to the next biggest limit. Thousand, I double True, up again. But I started with two hundred. I'm up to six thousand. Well, there you, you go. Think maybe Fire. I can go up to higher limits. Go up to ten, twenty, and twenty-four, uh, and then fifteen, hundred. Ten, twenty. <laughs> See what you want to win. You know, if, if no, it doesn't matter, just, if you don't, if, just, if you're not afraid to go broke, true, go to true, the ten, true. twenty limit. Take a couple two thousand dollar shots. Take a shot. I hear you. You know, I've run, I've run five hundred and over a hundred thousand more than once. Wow, nice, so, nice. I've probably done it like three or four times. So, you know, it's a, take a shot, man. Be a gambler. I or it. or you can play conservative if you don't if you need the money and stay what you're doing. Yeah, well like I said, I'm you know, I'm I'm just trying to win a little here and there and try to build it up a little bit. All it, right, it stay smaller, work. stay five ten then. True, true, true. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Later, bud. Take care, Mike. Yep. All right. I'm Mike the Mouth Mattiso. We'll be coming to you next week on Wednesday instead of Thursday because Thursday's Thanksgiving. I'm going to be out with my family for Thanksgiving. And we'll be here same time, 3 Pacific to 3.30 Pacific, 1-877-675-1306. 1-877-675-1306. You call me. You talk to Mike the Mouth on the mouthpiece. We're out of here.